Hello and welcome to the devotion for Wednesday, July the 11th, entitled, If You Love Something, Give It Away. Now, there's an old saying about, if you really love something, let it go. And if it returns to you, then it's yours forever. And if it doesn't, then it never really was yours to begin with. And that same understanding kind of informs what I want to talk about today. The greatest power, the greatest passion, the greatest uh, fulfillment that we can ever experience in our life, I believe, according to scripture, is when we give something away, not just when we hoard it for ourselves. That's the reason scripture says many people eager to get rich have pierced themselves with many, many griefs because the love of money is the root of all kind of evil, not money itself, but thinking that that's going to fix me, thinking that's going to make me happy, thinking that is going to fulfill me. He said, it is better to give than to receive, that when we give away, we actually gain more than when we try to hoard and hold ourselves. The in Ecclesiastes, uh, the uh, uh, Solomon, who was the most wealthy man on the face of the earth in his time, who built parks and cities and had uh, 800 wives and 900 concubines and who uh, exhausted himself with gold and with projects and denied himself nothing that looked desirable to himself, at the end of it all says it was meaningless. It was chasing after the wind to try to fulfill myself. He goes, and what I found is that when I honor God, that's when I find true life. In Matthew 16, 25, Jesus said, anyone who wants to save his life is simply going to lose it. But the one who will lose his life for me will actually find it. Now, what he means by that is if everything that I do is about finding life for me, eventually I find what uh, Solomon found. I can chase everything. And if I had enough money and enough time and enough opportunity, I could chase everything under the sun. And when I got to the end, Solomon says, it's meaningless. The one guy who had the power and the time and the opportunity to exhaust it all said, when you get to the end, it doesn't fulfill. It doesn't satisfy. As Mylon Lefebvre said, the best you can do is just get all the curiosity out of your life. But you don't gain fulfillment. Fulfillment comes when I give away something that is life-changing to another it becomes life-changing to me. And that's what Jesus said. If we are so wound up in finding life myself, we end up not finding what we're looking for. But when we lose our life for him, we find what we're looking for. In Mark eight thirty six, Jesus says, What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his own soul? forfeit his own soul. Now, of course, salvation would be the ultimate expression of that passage. But to look for everything, I mean, it's like the person who throws themselves into their business their whole life, and that's all they can see in being successful and, and get to the end of life and realize the most important things, the relationships around them always suffered, and the business never satisfied. They lost their soul by investing in the wrong things. What would it gain if we gained the whole world, if we accomplished everything, as Solomon says, and it all ends up meaningless? What a waste. I think one of the greatest statements that I ever heard about things and people was, says, use things and love people. Don't love things and use people. And those are powerful words. Do I just use things? Are they tools to better ends? And the things that I really value are the healthy relationships and what I can do beyond myself. In Acts 20, 24, Paul said, what, However, I consider my life worth nothing to me if only I may finish my race, race and complete the task that the Lord has given to me to do, the task of testifying the gospel of God's grace. He goes, you know, everything that was to me, Paul said, I just counted as a loss. It was all great stuff. It was wonderful. I'm glad for all the prestige and all the power and everything that I had early in life, but it wasn't fulfilling. And he goes, what's really been fulfilling is to do what I know God has called me to do. What did Solomon say? What I found is really fulfilling is to honor God, to fear God, and to do what he asked me to do, to fulfill that mission, to fulfill that purpose. Now, I know this is a tough sell. Most all of us love stuff. 
We want to fill our life with stuff that blesses me. Giving it away doesn't make a lot of sense. It doesn't seem like it's more blessed to give than to receive. But I'll give you this challenge. Every day, look for some way to touch the life of another person for the balance of this week. To do something that benefits you nothing but actually touches the life of another, whether it's writing a card of encouragement or making that phone call or buying someone lunch or going out of your way to show someone respect or going to their home and helping them out. Do something that touches another life that doesn't uh, in any way bounce back and feed you and see if it doesn't become a life-giving experience, that it gives you something that toys and trinkets can't purchase. And don't let life become so busy that there's no time for real life. Let's pray. Father, Lord, every one of us can have our days sucked away from us with uh, thousands of demands. Uh, Every one of us uh, look to medicate the busyness and the crazy chaotic nature of our lives by filling our own lives with stuff. But Father, over and over in Scripture, the people who actually had the ability to truly exhaust everything and to fulfill every selfish desire said at the end, they didn't get what they were looking for. It ended up being a chasing after the wind, meaningless. But to let your life be given away, to let the love that we want be given away, to give more blessed than receive, actually brought life. God, give us the power and the courage to walk out what you've asked us to do. And Lord, help us to discover the truth behind what in our human experience uh, seems a little strange. Let it change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, take the challenge. Do a few things. See what God does in them. And I'll see you tomorrow.